Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel, Average Drew Watch Reviews, where we do more than just reviews. If this is your first time on the channel, please do me the hugest favor and just like this video. It really helps to get this video out to more people. I definitely appreciate the support. So what we're doing today is the long-term review of the Breitling Navi Timer. I've had this now for almost a year. And I wanted to give you guys how it has been on the wrist as this is the watch that I wear most often. Now, this particular version is the reference number A23322. This one here was produced in 2007 and houses the Value 7753 movement. With the 7753 movement, comes with a little bit of an aggravating feature, which is the fact that our crown here only pops out to one position. So you say, well, how do you change the date? Well, you're gonna have to do it this way. Now, you don't have to go all the way around twice to change the date. I'm gonna show you a cheat code right here, or should I say a hack to get this date to change. So we're gonna change it right here. Now we're gonna bring it back to eight o'clock and then we bring it back forward again. And that's how we hack the date. It's gonna be aggravating to some, but for me it's a neat party trick and also a nice icebreaker. So the value 7753, which is essentially a value 7750, turn to its side so that you can get the subdial orientation that you see here. The other thing that I liked about this particular watch was the numerals on the dial. Typically with the Navi timer, on most Navi timers, you will see the batons. I like the fact that this one has numerals. It just makes this one just a little bit more unique than the others. The other unique feature that I like about this particular one is the fact that this is a very wearable 41 millimeters. Now, typically with an aviation watch, a pilot's watch, they do come bigger because you, they, you want them to be readable. With the 41 millimeter, however, this is gonna definitely be tougher on the eyes when you're doing calculations with the slide rule. Now, with the 46 millimeter, when you're dealing with the slide rule, all the numbers on the dial will be indeed larger, so therefore it'll be easier on the eyes. So I've noticed that when I fiddle around with the slide rule, that I actually need to take out my dollar store glasses and put these on. And when I do, I notice that I actually have a better time reading the dial. So that's another thing that you need to consider when purchasing this watch. Luckily for me, I'm not a pilot and I know how to calculate a tip in my head, so I don't need to use the slide rule at all. Um, so that's one thing that you wanna consider. The other thing that I considered when buying this watch was the fact that I needed to have a bracelet. Now, I did install this bracelet on the opposite way, I know that, so um, I can always just change that back. However, I just wanted to show you this on the bracelet because I actually usually have this on, and this is a huge shout out to Strapsco because Strapsco provides, or should I say they sell, a Breitling style leather strap. And as you can see, I've had it on there quite often, and you get the padded section here, you get the contrast stitching, and I do like the crocodile pattern. Now I also have from Strapsco the same type of version, but with a different type of mechanism here, which is also what you'll see on a lot of Navi timers. I also have it in maroon, and I also have it in the traditional black color with that buckle as well, which you'll see right here. This one here is what the Navi timer is typically paired with most of the time. But, however, I purchased the Navi timer with the bracelet because the bracelet is the much more expensive option. 
If you were to buy this bracelet separate, you're going to be paying anywhere from 800 on up. I've seen this. I've seen these bracelets for well over a thousand in some cases. So, for me to buy this watch with the bracelet was key because I can always buy an aftermarket, or even if I were to buy a genuine Breitling strap, I'm not paying upwards of $1,000. Now, I'm gonna show this to you on the wrist, and I'm gonna give you guys some of the measurements that I like because it definitely makes it wearable for my seven inch wrist. So, as I stated, rounding off to 41 millimeters because it's 40 and some change as you'll see there and we have a lug width of 22 millimeters which makes this a very parable strapped watch i've even paired it up with this funky bracelet which is also from straps co which lives on my custom seiko uh, watch here from a good buddy of mine case and dial now, as you can see, very wearable 41 millimeters, 48 millimeters from lug to lug. And we do get a taper with this bracelet, 19 millimeters and change there. So very nice looking bracelet. I do like how, here's the other thing. This particular Breitling has the wing logo. Now I do get the B actually at least, should I say, the Breitling right there. So there's the different font there, and you'll see some Breitlings with that type of logo. And then, oh, here's the B right here on that safety clasp. So I get a little bit of everything with this particular model. This is a seven-link bracelet. I have always loved the Breitling bracelets for the simple reason that they have the slant, and it just gives it... As you can see the slanted links just gives it a different look you know and my favorite one actually is from my brightling headwind this one here is a much more substantial bracelet with a five linker but as you can see the links or are, are more substantial and i just like this bracelet more being the five link but same pilot pilot bracelet design love 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 it so and of course when I want to go into the water I can use this one because yeah this one here 30 meters of water resistance which equates to a hundred feet so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna press in the crown and start that up now as you can as you'll notice you get a lot of fingerprints on the crystal and that's because they're using sapphire uh, AR coating on top and underneath the crystal, which gives you a very good view of the dial in all different types of lighting. However, it does give you that oily looking residue when you have the fingerprints in certain lights. So you will find yourself constantly cleaning this if you're in different types of lighting. However, the advantage is you're gonna see this in all different types of lighting without the glare. The other negative of having the AR coating on the top is that it is prone to scratching. Um, you know, you can scratch it. However, um, I do take very good care of my watches and I avoid that. But if it's something that you're gonna wear every single day, you know, let's just say right there, that could be a permanent mark. However, um, that's just a mark that we can get rid of but in some cases if you, you can rub this away you can scratch it and that can definitely look bad over time i actually got a new crystal on this particular watch because of the fact that this was from 2005 or is it two, three, either 2003 2005 either way this watch here had a scratched up sapphire uh, the ar coating was scratched up and it really bugged me and then somehow I rubbed it off by accident. So I got a new crystal on there and now it's very, you know, it looks good. But that's just one of the negatives that you're gonna get with the double AR coating. Now, what I really like about this dial is the fact that like you'll notice that when you play around with the lighting, look at the lettering and look at the numbers. You could definitely see 
where the light plays off of that. And it's really, really cool um, to, to look at. And I really, I really enjoy that about these particular watches. So this is going to be your continuous second hand. This is going to be your count, uh, your 30 minute timer. And this is going to be your hour timer up to 12 hours. Here is your date window. Some people may, may or may not like that. It doesn't bother me. I do like that it's angled um, and that we do get a date. However, that party trick that I showed you earlier is a bit of a pain. Clicking, everything is solid. There is no jumping of that second hand because we have a really good mechanism in this watch. And they really made sure that every time we click that we get a precise press, no jumping of that second hand there or a countdown timer and it resets back to zero. Now, wearing this on a daily basis is really because of even the weight of it, which I can actually give you guys a weight here. Um, let me do that while we're here. Let's take a weight with the bracelet. There we go. This watch weighs in at 4.9, so five ounces. I'm gonna give this to you in grams, 136 grams. So again, a very wearable watch, not very heavy at all, very comfortable on the wrist. And for those of you that suffer from wrist fatigue, shame on you. But seriously though, um, this is definitely a watch that you can wear every day because it's not a heavy watch. And as you'll see, it wears extremely well because of its 48 millimeter from lug to lug doesn't spill over the seven inch wrist. And I think even a person that has even a six and three quarter or six and a half could wear this comfortably, very legible. Um, I'm gonna give you guys a loom shot just to show you how this looks at night. We are getting a super luminova. Not the best loom in the world, I have to admit. Uh, but then again, it's not a diver watch. So you're not gonna get that diver uh, loom in regards to it lasting a very long time. But initially, coming in from a sunny day, going into a dark area, you're definitely going to read those numerals and that, those handsets very, very nicely. All right, so we're going to put this watch on the time graph. And as you'll see, this watch is running within COSC certification. This is a chronometer certified watch. As you'll see here, this is a certified chronometer that it says there on the dial. And it'll also say it on the back of the watch. I, yeah, so certified chronometer says it. There you go. And it also has calculations in the back as well on the back of the dial or should I say the case back. You get some more detail here, Breitling, and then of course, manufactured in Swiss. Model de Pose. The adjustments on the bracelet itself, you get one, two, three, four micro adjust. These are screw links, however, not the easiest to watch to size. If you want to learn how to size a bracelet like this, check out the link above. I actually show you guys how to do this one, the headwind, which is exactly the same as doing a five link is the same as doing a seven. It's just, you're getting the, you're just getting more links in between. Same thing though, same idea. So if you follow that video, you'll be able to do this one as well. No. This one here is also 15, if I round it off 15, millimeters in depth. However, when I wear it though, it doesn't feel like a thick watch. Okay. I mean, even when you look at it here, it doesn't feel like a thick watch. Now, when we compare it to the Tudor Black Bay, the Tudor Black Bay GMT, that one is notorious at 15 millimeters in thickness. 
So essentially, when we take a look at both of these watches, it's crazy how we always talk about this Tudor Black Bay GMT being so thick. However, and it shouldn't be because at the end of the day, these are both the same thickness. And yet, both, in my opinion, very wearable watches. So take that as it may. Beautiful looking watch, very iconic, and something that I actually had. So a year ago, I actually brought this to Breitling. I sent it over to Breitling. Um, I got this service completely overhauled. New crystal, uh, new dial even, new hands, movement serviced. Check out that video above if you are curious to see how much it costs to service this watch. And also the story behind the dilemma that I had when I first purchased this watch. You definitely don't want to miss that one. But there you go, guys. This is a solid watch. I'm loving it even a year after. It's been a watch that I wear very often. And um, I have to say, I don't regret the purchase even a year later. So take that as it may. That's my two cents, guys. You can keep the change and always remember, God bless. And I'll see you guys next time on Average Joe Watch Reviews. Wow.